Josephine's Restaurant and Catering. We offer lutong bahay Filipino dishes and desserts. Try our crispy pata, lumpiang Shanghai, pancit palabo, relyenong manok, and many more. We serve halo-halo, leche flan, and other traditional Filipino desserts. For events and special occasions, Josephine's also offers catering services and takeout party trays. For authentic Filipino cuisine and true Pinoy taste, try Josephine's Restaurant and Catering. 2650 Main Street in Vancouver. Balitang Vancouver is brought to you by Brayfort Media Group. Hello mga kabayan, narito na naman ang mga pangunahing balita sa ating komunidad. Mga maiinit na isyo at mga balitang puno ng kontrobersiya ang hatid ng Balitang Vancouver para sa inyong lahat sa linggong ito. Ito ang boses ng mga Pinoy sa Vancouver. Ako po, si Elisa Roxena. Mga impormasyon at balitang hindi dapat palang pasino baliwalain. Mga isyong nagbibigay leksyon at kulay sa bawat buhay ng mga Pilipino sa Canada. Ako si Melanie Bornal. Mga paalala at babala na dapat nating alamin at sundin upang maiwasan ang mga sakuna at kapahamakan. Mga okasyon at selebrasyon sa ating komunidad na kailangan nating malaman at paghandaan. Ako po si Angel Garcia. Ito ang Balitang Vancouver. Para sa Balitang Vancouver ngayon, Freddy Bagono, kinawestyon ng resulta ng eleksyon para sa Board of Directors ng Multicultural Helping House Society. Iba't ibang selebrasyon at okasyon para sa 116 Philippine Independence Day celebration ginanap sa Vancouver. Solusyon para sa problema ng mga miyembro ng British Columbia Teachers Federation patuloy pa rin isinusulong. Kinwestyon ni Freddy Baguno ang naging resulta ng eleksyon para sa Board of Directors ng Multicultural Helping House Society. Ating alamin ang kanyang mga reklamo at reaksyon sa isang interview ng Balitang Vancouver kasama si Irene Kerubin. Isang reklamo ang idinulog sa Balitang Vancouver may kaugnayan di umano sa unconstitutional proceeding para sa eleksyon of Board of Directors ng Multicultural Helping House Society na ginanap noong nakarang May 31, 2014 sa kanilang tanggapan. Ayon sa legasyon ni Freddy Baguno, dismayado siya sa naging resulta ng nasabing eleksyon at sa pagtrato sa kanya bilang lehitimong butante, kandidato at miyembro ng nasabing organisasyon. So, Freddy, last May 31st, the Multicultural Helping House Society had their General Assembly meeting and the election of officers. That's right. And you were there. Tell us what happened. Yeah, actually, the uh, meeting started at about 1.10 p.m. During the election proceeding, I raised something. I raised a point of order. In parliamentary rule, or uh, Robert's rule, when a member stood up and said, Mr. Chairman, point of order. You have all the priority to speak. So I cited my point of order number one, and this is it. And my, uh, this committee on election, the committee on election, was created by handpicked members, around 15 of the Multicultural Helping House Society, and not by election from the General Assembly meeting as required by its bylaws. And therefore, this committee is illegitimate. At that instance, the uh, chairman said that they have this assembly meeting. I said there is no assembly meeting as there is no notice of meeting to all these 2,000 members. And suddenly, the chairman declared that I am out of order and ordered me to leave the place. Okay. So you had some points to raise. Yeah. But you, you were not given the chance yes. to say it to the committee. Yeah. What were you expecting them to do when you raised the first point of order there? What, what were you expecting them to... How did you expect them to respond? 
I expect them to just listen until I finish my point of orders because under parliamentary rule or Robert's rule, let the guy uh, who stood up for point of orders, let him finish his statement. Then the chairman will make a ruling. If the member who stood up do not agree with the ruling, they can point this issue to the general membership meeting, then we can discuss. That's the procedure. But the thing is, my point of order is responded by out of order, leave this place. Right. It's funny. So you were injected and you were shot. Yeah, and, and I, uh, I follow them. As a good uh, member of the society, I follow them. I said, uh, yeah, oh, uh, okay, Mr. Chairman, I will follow you. Okay, and you also said that they were handpicked. Yes. Uh, what makes you say that? Because I have some people inside, they said, oh, oh it's being presided by Mr. Bendanya and Ms. Colobong. And only about 15, more or less, about 15. This is not a General Assembly meeting. When you call General Assembly meeting, the Corporate Secretary will issue formally written notices in these uh, 2,000 members. Because Mr. Bendanya told us, oh, we have 2,000 members. So I assume they should issue notices to these 2,000 members. I, my, I myself and some of my friends, my mom, didn't get any notice. What's this assembly meeting? You had other point of orders? Yeah, point of order number two, let me read. The uh, denominating committee appointed by the board of directors, though legitimate, it's okay, appointed by the board, but accepted nominees through the board and not directly from the general membership meeting. So it is said that the nominati nominating committee is just a uh, rubber stamp. They just, uh, the, the board just handed these uh, nominees, and that's it. They just uh, certify, oh, they, they comply with all of this. Again, another big question. It says one of the uh, criteria to becoming a qualified uh, director is possesses key skills such as financial planning, legal, marketing, and or fundraising expertise. Wow. I, uh, I was told some new members who were elected last Saturday don't have this kind of skill. How come they were there? Because it's all came from the board, passed to the nominating committee, and passed to the election process. Me, myself, I would say, modesty aside, I told them, if there is uh, one more qualified, then that's me, because I've been a president and a chief executive officer for four years of another Canadian registered charity. Num point of order number three. The 11 criteria, yeah, this is it, the 11 criteria, to qualify as candidates in today's election as set by the outgoing board of directors are illegal as these are all inconsistent and contradictory to the existing MHSS constitution and bylaws. So, and also you said na it's also contradictory, I guess ang, you're referring to the third one, must be a member in good standing for two consecutive years. That's right. When in fact, dun sa 15 days. guidelines, 15 days lang ang hinihingi. That's right. So given on my inconsistency and you say abuse of power, in all in all, anong gusto nyo pong iparating sa Multicultural Helping House Society after na nangyari noong May 31st? I gave them a formal letter sometime last month about this one. I called their attention already and they ignored me. So what I expect to them is to rectify the errors that they have committed. Instead of this one, just comply with the bylaws. Samantala, nakausap naman ng balitang Vancouver si Tatay Tom Avindanio, ang nahalal na presidente ng Board of Directors ng Multicultural Helping House Society. At ayon sa kanya, handa naman silang sagutin ang mga aligasyon ni Freddy Baguno sa susunod na edisyon ng balitang Vancouver. Kaya abangan ninyo sa susunod na linggo. Majority ng mga guro sa BC ay payag na paigtingin pa ang kanilang kilos protesta kung patuloy ng babaliwalain ng gobyerno ang kanilang hiling. Lalo pang lumakas ang pwersa ng mga miyembro ng BC Teacher Federation na isulong ang kanilang adika ay makamit ang kanilang mga demand sa gobyerno ng British Columbia nang magkaisa ang mga ito na maglunsad ng mas malawakang pag-walk out at full-scale strike sa buong probinsya sa mga susunod na mga araw kung patuloy pa rin babaliwalain ng gobyerno ang kanilang mga hiling. Ayon kay Jim Aker, 
president of BC Teachers Federation, lumalabas na 86% sa mga guro ay pumayag na paigtingin pa ang kanilang kilos protesta laban sa gobyerno ng BC at ang mga ito ay handang maglunsad ng mas malawakang strike anumang oras kung kakailanganin. Pero ayon din sa kanya, ang problema ito ay malulutas lamang kung ang gobyerno at ang BCTF ay magkasundo sa pamamagitan ng isang collective bargaining argument at mapakinggan ng kanilang mga hiling sa dagdag sahod, solusyon para sa staffing levels, class composition at provision of more learning facilities para sa mga mag-aaral. Dagdag pa ni Aker, malaki rin ang kanyang pasasalamat sa patuloy na suporta at pag-unawa ng mga magulang at mga estudyante ang apektado sa problemang ito dahil sa kanilang isinusulong sa ngayon ay hindi lamang para sa interes ng mga guro, ito rin daw ay para sa kaunlaran ng edukasyon at kapakanan ng mga mag-aaral. The government was bargaining in bad faith with us. That had, they had no intention of coming to an agreement with us, but what they wanted to do is provoke a full-scale strike for their own political gain to turn public opinion against them. Education Minister Peter Fassbender may mensahe para sa mga miyembro ng BC Teachers Federation na may kaugnayan sa kanilang planong malawakang pagwewelga. Bilang sagot ng gobyerno sa pinaplanong mas malawakang strike ng mga miyembro ng BC Teachers Federation, ipinahayag ni Education Minister Peter Fassbender na hindi naman kailangan pa ng mga guro na lumabas pa ng mga eskwalahan upang mag-strike upang makuha ang kanilang mga hiling. Hindi naman daw kailangan hahantong pa sa mas malalang sitwasyon ang hidwaang namamagitan sa gobyerno at mga guro sa ngayon. Kung ang mga ito daw ay papayag lamang na pag-usapan ng matiwasay ang mga isyong may kaugnayan sa kanilang mga hinain at tanggapin na lamang ang inaalok ng gobyerno sa ngayon para sa kanila, na ayon sa kanya ay naaayon naman sa batas. Dagdag pa ng ministro, tama naman daw ang inaalok ng gobyerno na dagdag sahod sa ngayon para sa mga guro, ngunit ang hiling daw ng mga ito ay halos apat na beses itong itaas ikumpara sa mga napagkasundo ang sahod na ibinibigay sa ngayon sa halos 150,000 government employees, kabilang na ang mga school support workers. Nais ng gobyerno na matuldukan na ang problemang ito bago matapos ang buwan ng Hunyo. Isang official proclamation galing sa pamahalaan ng Vancouver ang iginawad sa Filipino community bilang respeto sa kulturang Pinoy at pagkilala sa Philippine Independence Day na isa na sa mga importanteng selebrasyon ng lungsod. Isang Philippine flag raising ceremony ang ginanap sa harap ng Vancouver City Hall noong nakarang Webes ng hapon bilang pagunita sa ikaisang daan at ikalabing anim na anibersaryo ng kalayaan ng Pilipinas. Ang naturang programa ay pinangunan ng tanggapan ng Philippine Consulate at ng mga supporting Filipino immigrant service providers, mga non-profit organizations at mga ordinaryong individual na palaging sumusuporta sa mga programa ng Filipino community dito sa British Columbia. And talking about unifying symbols, I would like to bring up with the indulgence of the worship, which unfortunately is not here, a matter of growing significance to us at the Philippine Consulate and to the Filipino community in general. I refer to our community's ardent desire to establish our own Filipino community center right here in Vancouver. While we comprise the third largest visible immigrant community and the fastest, fastest growing one at that, we do not have our own community, community center in the city to this day. To Mr. Mayor and his colleague, I hope that I, together with community leaders, will have an opportunity to meet with you to seek your guidance and advice on this important matter. To my dear Kababayans here in Vancouver, pursuing this dream will be a test of our fortitude, our unity, our integrity, not to mention ingenuity and resourcefulness. It is an exciting challenge and it demands a new brand of heroism, not unlike that which our forefathers showed when they battled the ads to build the... Naging espesyal ang okasyong ito na dinaluhan mismo ng mayor ng Vancouver na si Gregor Robertson at ng ilang miyembro ng konseho dahil isang official proclamation ang iginawad ng pahamala ng Vancouver para sa Filipino community. 
Ito ay ang pagkilala sa Philippine Independence Celebration at sa kulturang Pinoy bilang isa na sa mga importanteng okasyon at selebrasyong pangkultura na gaganapin dito sa Vancouver kada taon. Whereas the people of Vancouver, British Columbia celebrate with the Filipino-Canadian community their observance of the 116th anniversary of Philippine Independence Day on June 12, 2014, and whereas the Filipino-Canadian community, in its desire to celebrate with all Filipinos in the Philippines and around the world this historic event of honoring their heroes and forefathers who fought and sacrificed for the freedom of their nation, with the city of Vancouver, and whereas the Filipino-Canadian community, with all of its cultural activities towards uplifting its admirable values of hard work, perseverance, faith, and strong family relationships, has created a positive contribution to the development of the model society of people in the city, and whereas members of the Filipino-Canadian community organize celebrations throughout Vancouver and British Columbia in recognition of this historic moment during the month of June, now, therefore, I, for Gregor Robertson, Mayor of the City of Vancouver, to hereby proclaim the week of June the 12th to the 19th, 2014, as Philippine Independence Festival Week. Congratulations. I'm Mayor Gregor Robertson and uh, today uh, proclaiming Philippine Independence Festival Week in the city of Vancouver. We raise the flag and uh, celebrate independence of the Philippines now and the whole community here, all the leaders from the community, a wonderful time which is now an annual uh, celebration here at City Hall. So to, uh, to all of you out there watching, Mabuhay Filipinas! Mabuhay Vancouver! Muli na namang ibinaos ang pista ng bayan sa Slocan Park upang gunitain ang ika-116 Philippine Independence Day Celebration. Balikan natin ang mga highlights sa naturang okasyon. Nandito po tayo ngayon sa Slocan Park sa Vancouver para i-cover ang pista ng bayan for community service. At nakikita nyo po ngayon, nag-uumpisa na ang kanilang program, pero maya-maya po ipapakita namin sa inyo ang parade na naganap kaninang umaga. Abangan nyo po. Masaya at makulay ang ginanap na fiesta ng bayan sa Slocum Park nung nakaraang linggo kung saan dinuluhan nito ng mga Pinoy dito sa Lower Mainland. Ang naturang okasyon ay isa sa pinakamalaking selebrasyong ginaganap bawat taon dito sa Vancouver na may kaugnayan sa pagunita sa kalayaan ng Pilipinas. Dumating sa nasabing okasyon ng mga kilalang personalidad at mga individual ng Filipino community dito sa British Columbia, ang mga immigrant service providers, Filipino associations, club and non-profit organizations, Filipino business establishments, mga religious groups, at mga community service-oriented organizations. Thank you so much for inviting me here. I've been here many times as a city councilor and then twice now as an elected MLA, and it's a great pleasure. And I think it gets better every year. And uh, what a great parade and wonderful booths, and thank you so much to the community. The Filipino community in British Columbia is so important to us and in fact of all the groups that immigrate to Canada I think there's more people from Philippines now than almost any other country and those connections that are built and maintained between people who've come here people still in the Philippines the trade connections the cultural connections they are so important to us here in British Columbia and besides that people from the Philippines really know how to throw a good party yeah. year of independence for the Philippines and I'm very, very proud and honored to have that celebration once again happen in the heart of my riding, Vancouver Kingsway, where we have such a large and vibrant Filipino population. I want to thank all of the organizers and all of the volunteers and all of the people who have set up booths to, to come here today and share. I had the opportunity to uh, travel to Manila uh, just a couple of weeks ago, and it, it is a beautiful city and, of course, a part of a beautiful country. So congratulations, everyone, and I hope everyone has a great celebration. Thank you. Of course, I would like to acknowledge all our uh, special guests uh, today uh, from three levels of government. We have representatives from the federal, from the provincial, and from our uh, local uh, city uh, here in Vancouver. So big, big thank you to all of you, to uh, MP Wayang, to MP Don Davis, to Minister uh, Susan Anton, 
to, uh, to our council lord, to the representative of Ms. Mabel Elmore, and of course this morning I saw Senator Yona Martin. So big, big thank you to all of you for gracing this occasion and of course for honoring us with your presence. Happy to be here. Happy Independence Day, Vancouver and Canada and of course the Philippines. Maligayang karawan ng kalayaan Pilipinas, especially here in Vancouver. Thank you, Balitang, Canada, Balitang Vancouver. Isang gabing puno ng musika at kasiyahan ang naging handog ng Philippine Consulate para sa selebrasyon ng ating kalayaan. Panoorin natin ito. Isang musical-inspired Thanksgiving banquet ang inihandog ng tanggapan ng Philippine Consul General kasabay sa 116th Philippine Independence Day celebration noong nagkarang Webes ng gabi. Ang selebrasyong ito ay dinaluhan ng mga importanteng panauhin galing sa iba't ibang sektor ng Canadian government multicultural communities, businessmen and entrepreneurs, government officials ng British Columbia, mga miyembro ng media, at mga Filipino community leaders at mga supporters ng iba't ibang programa ng Filipino community dito sa Canada. Ito ang ginanap sa Coast Harbor Hotel noong nakarang June 12 ng gabi. Narito ang special coverage ng Balitang Vancouver. And we have so much fun. Hope you can join us in a lot of our activities here in Vancouver. And I want to greet and thank and acknowledge our tremendous Filipino community on this great celebration, this celebration of the 116th anniversary of independence. Uh, happy Independence Day! Mabuhay! Mabuhay and happy Independence Day. Mabuhay ang Pilipinas! Happy Independence Day! There's nothing uh, better than being free and to reach this uh, celebration up to 116 years is a great accomplishment. Long live the Philippines! Mabuhay ang Pilipinas! Happy Independence Day, 116th anniversary. Mabuhay ang Pilipinas. Okay, happy Independence po sa mga kababayan ko na nandito ngayon sa Canada at saka sa reception natin. Tagumpay ang kauna-unahang Vancouver Pinoy Spring Festival na ginanap sa Pacific National Exhibition Center. Ito ay inorganisa ng Rayford Media Group at handog sa mga Pinoy sa Canada. Tunghaya natin ang mga kaganapan sa report na ito. Sa kabila ng maulaning panahon, dinagsa pa rin ng mga Pinoy ang kauna-unahang Vancouver Spring Festival sa PNE noong nakaraang linggo. Ito ay dinaluhan ng mga Pinoy galing sa iba't ibang probinsya sa Canada. Ang naturang festival na inorganisa ng Rayford Media Group ay nagbigay ng pagkakataon upang magtipon-tipon ng mga Pinoy, lalong-lalo na ang mga narito sa British Columbia, upang magkaisa at nakisaya sa isang selebrasyong puno ng mga sayawan, kantahan, food display, concert, parada, at marami pang iba. Naging pambungad na atraksyon ay ang Flores de Mayo Parade na sinalihan ng mga magagandang mga Pinay at mga panatiko dito sa Lower Mainland. Isang misa din ang ginanap para sa mga Katolikong Pinoy bilang pasasalamat para sa tagumpay ng naturang okasyon. Naging atraksyon din para sa mga dumalo ang mini-concert ng iba't ibang banda at mga performers dito sa Lower Mainland. Nagpakitang gilas din ang iba't ibang grupo ng mga kabataan sa isang dance showdown na ginanap pagdating ng gabi. Nagkaroon din ng pagkakataong i-launch ng Rayford Media Group ang bagong itong TV talk show production na pinamagatang The Big Shift. Ngunit, ang pinaka-inaabangan ng lahat ay ang Grand Finals ng PNT Idol na sinalihan ng mga magagaling na mga contestants galing sa iba't ibang probinsya dito sa Canada. Dumating din sa nasabing okasyon ang mga importanteng personalidad sa gobyerno, mga negosyante, mga representatives galing sa iba't ibang kompanya at labor organizations, at mga sponsors at benefactors ng Rayford Media Group. Isang prayer rally ang gaganapin sa June 19 ng mga Pilipino at mga Vietnamese sa harap ng China Consulate Office dito sa Vancouver. Ating alamin sa report na ito. Isang bagong tatag na Filipino non-profit organization na tinatawag na Top Silog ay nag-oorganisa sa ngayon upang maglunsad ng isang prayer rally. Ito ay gaganapin sa darating na June 19 
bilang bahagi na rin ng month-long celebration ng 116th Philippine Independence. Uh, kami po ay may tinayong bagong maliit na organization na ang pangalan niya ay uh, Top Silog. So uh, this is a uh, Phil Canadian Network for Truth and Justice. So dadalhin niyo, dadali niyo po yung mga issue na hindi masyadong uh, ginagalaw ng ating mga community. Ang una pong activity niya ay sa June 19, kami po ang mag-hold ng one-hour prayer rally sa harapan ng China Consulate Office mula alas 12 ng tanghali hanggang alauna ng hapon. Ito ay bilang protesta sa patuloy na pag-trespass ng uh, Communist China sa Philippine waters. Actually, sa ngayon po ay nagtatayo ng structure ang China sa Philippine waters na masyado hong maluba ang nangyayari. So muli, iniimbitahan po namin ang aming mga kababayan this uh, coming uh, June 19, Webes, 12 to 1, in front of the China Consulate Office. Gaganapin po natin ang isang uh, oras na prayer rally. And good news, the Vietnamese people will be coming in to join in this uh, cause. At bago po kami magtapos, nais po namin batiin lahat ng dakila at butihing ama. Happy Father's Day po! Happy Father's Day sa aming producer ng Balitang Vancouver na si Kuya Ray Fortalesa at aming director na si Kuya Rolly Fortalesa, editor Kuya Alvin. Happy Father's Day! Happy Father's Day sa ating lahat! Happy Father's Day, Kuya! Happy Father's, Father's Day! Day. At nais ko pong batiin, Happy Father's Day and Happy Birthday sa aking ama! At dito na naman po nagtatapos ang Balitang Vancouver para sa linggong ito. Kung kayo ay may mga komento, isyo o balitang nais ibahagi sa aming programa, ang Balitang Vancouver ay bukas para sa inyong lahat. Maaari mag-email lamang po sa balitangvancouver at gmail.com o tumawag sa 604-588-6397. Kami ay nagagalak na magpatuloy na maglingkod sa inyong lahat. Samahan niyo po kaming muli sa susunod na linggo para sa isa na namang edisyon ng Balitang Vancouver. Sana'y naging bahagi na naman kami ng inyong masayang araw at masaganang linggo. Mabuhay ang mga Pinoy sa Canada. Ako po si Elizar Oxena. At ako po si Alan Garcia. Ako si Melanie Bornau. Angel Garcia po ang inyong lingkod. Ito, Ito ang, ang Balita ng Vancouver. Vancouver. Happy birthday, Nella! Awesome, happy birthday! Oh, happy birthday to you! Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday to you! Oh my gosh! Hello. Happy birthday, dear Nella! Happy birthday! For authentic Filipino cuisine and true Pinoy taste, try Josephine's Restaurant and Catering, 2650 Main Street in Vancouver.